Hi, and welcome to this episode of Wine Anecdote Wine Stories. So today's episode is going to be about a very special category of wines, which is sparkling wines. You probably know uh, sparkling wines such as Champagne, Prosecco or Cava, but there's actually a lot more to discover. So today I'd like to introduce you to, to a very particular type of sparkling wine category, which is Vin Pétillant Naturel. So what exactly is that? So before we move on to the tasting part, let me explain to you what the difference is with a classical sparkling wine. So to make a traditional sparkling wine, like champagne for example, you first make a normal wine and then by doing a second fermentation in the bottle or in a tank for uh, most proseccos for example, you, make, you, you, add, you add the CO2 into the wine and you make the wine sparkling. No, for vin pétillant naturel, that's not the case. So basically, during the first, during the initial fermentation of the wine, where the wine is turned from grape juice into wine, the wine is already bottled. And normally for still wine, this is done when the fermentation is finished, and to make sure that it, there is no CO2 going to produce itself in the bottle. And for normal sparkling wines, they do a second fermentation. Uh, to, to create the sparkling character. But for Vin Pension Naturel, actually the wine is bottled during the fermentation. Big risk for the winemaker, uh, because if you do that too soon and the fermentation is not very far yet, then there is a lot of CO2 going to produce itself in the bottle and your bottle might even explode if that happens. And if you put it in too late during the fermentation process, if, if you bottle it too late, then there is not a lot going to happen anymore. So there's not a lot of CO2 that's going to um, be produced uh, during the rest of that fermentation. So your wine is going to taste very flat. Well, it's not the idea either. So big risk for the winemaker. If it works out well, you have a, an amazing wine. And what's really cool about it is that every bottle is going to taste different. It's less uniform than classical sparkling wines. Like, if every bottle that you open is going to be a big surprise. So enough told about this winemaking method. Let's go to taste some vin pension naturel and see whether this is something that you could, for example, serve during the holiday season, during your Christmas dinner, for example. So I brought you two vin pension naturel, both from France, but both from very different wine regions. And I'm going to start with this one. Which is a wine from the Loire Valley in France, and it comes from a winery that is called Le Noad. This particular wine, the name of it is Gribule. So, what really, really interested me when I saw this wine for the first time is the color. It's not white, it's not rose but it's something in between. That really intrigued me when I saw it for the first time and made me very eager to try it. What I suggest is let's try it live together and see what we think of it. By the way, Le Noade is a family owned wine domain owned by a couple called Jackie and Véronique and they produce all their wines certified organically. So it's always a positive point, of course. Like champagne and most other sparkling wines, it has the same type of cork to make sure that the bottle it protects the bottle from opening before you actually want to open it. And let's see what this bottle gives us. First thing to notice when we look at the wine, of course, it is very sparkly, very bubbly. Um, they absolutely uh, did not bottle it too late during the fermentation process. It's definitely not flat. There is a lot going on there. And again, had a beautiful color. She it has it's sort of yeah, gold with, with, with quite a bit of, of, of pink um, in it. Yeah, very, very nice. I, I like it a lot personally. 
And let's smell the wine. Yeah, this is different from any classical um, sparkling wine that I've tried before. Just to give you an idea, this wine is a blend of three different grape varieties. They are called Chenin Blanc, Grolo and Cabernet Franc, which are all three of them are quite, quite well-known grape varieties in the Loire Valley. And actually two of them are red, one is white, which also explains that bit of darker color. And especially when I smell the wine, I get aromas mostly of red fruit that I smell red currant, some raspberry, a bit of ripe pear as well. Like fruity but very, a very soft, full-bodied, soft wine. Something a little bit creamy as well on the nose. Let's, let's try it. Hmm. Yeah, this particular bottle, very sparkling, I can really get the pétillance, as you would say in French. Mm. And what strikes me, even though I got more like ripe fruit, red fruit, pear, etc., on the nose, on the palate, the wine is quite dry. Yes, I get that ripe fruit, but I also get a really nice refreshing acidity that perfectly balances this wine. So I'm actually very positively surprised about this. And on the nose, it, yeah, it was slightly overripe maybe, but it's very well balanced with, uh, with some more refreshing notes uh, on the palate. So really, really, really nice, like quite a dry wine. Um, I would serve this either just as a drink, for example, when you have guests coming over and you want to surprise them with a... Uh, a, a very different sparkling wine and something very difficult compared to the classical ones. Yeah, you could definitely serve this as an aperitif. Or for example, you have this with, um, with a bit of seafood, for example, or some sort of lighter cheeses. That would be really, really lovely as well. Hmm. Yes, very nice first Vin Pétillant Naturel. Now let's go on to the second one. I had to compare it and see how different these wines may be. So for the second wine, which is from Domaine Rivaton, uh, we travel all the way down to the south of France to a wine area called uh, Roussillon, a tiny wine village called La Tour. So a very different climate. Now let's compare it on the map just to show you. The first wine comes yeah, from the Loire Valley and actually from the center of the Loire Valley. Well, the second one comes all the way from the south of France here in the Roussillon area, very close to the Spanish border. So completely different climate, uh, different grape varieties as well. In the first wine, we were dealing with Chenin Blanc, with Grolo and with Cabernet Franc. And in the second wine, we're dealing with a very well-known grape from the south of French, France, which is called Syrah. So, color and look at the difference as well it's nothing to do with each other here we're dealing with a very dark colored rosé sparkling wine well, let's taste it let's compare the two this wine maker made it easy for us it's closed the bottle with a beer cap Yeah, so again, it's definitely sparkling. There was a lot happening in my glass. The bubbles that seem very, very small, very refined, lovely raspberry color, beautiful. The wine also has some sort of like unfiltered personality. I see that it's a little bit cloudy. It's not completely clear. It's a style choice of the winemaker not to filter his wines to really make it keep its authentic character. I smell it. 
yeah, very, very rich for a sparkling wine. I smell a lot of very ripe red fruit. I have ripe strawberry, cherries, some raspberry as well. Yeah, mostly fruity aromas. Quite ripe, even almost a little bit, a hint of dried fruits in there. Hmm, let's taste it. Interesting. Dry wine, fruity flavors, and what I already thought I smelled, I really get it on the palate as well. It's something tiny bit oxidized, a um, little bit of uh, dried fruit flavors that make it very interesting, this wine, and absolutely extremely different compared to more uh, classical sparkling wines. So when we compare the two wines, uh, this one is definitely had uh, the more classical of the two, even though it is different uh, from a traditional sparkling wine, but it has the same sort of characteristics of freshness and some fruit flavors. Uh, While well, this one is very, very uh, different and nothing compared to any uh, traditional sparkling wine, thanks to its uh, very ripe fruit flavors and that slightly oxidized taste that gives it a little bit of like uh, dried fruit flavors and aromas. So I would suggest if you are looking for a surprising sparkling wine, uh, for example, for a dinner party, then absolutely you should go for a vin pétillant naturel. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of different types of them. Uh, so guide yourself, first of all, about the color of the wine and don't hesitate to ask for advice as well. Um, but um, this is really a type of wine that you can surprise your guests with at, at a dinner party. So what's interesting as well is that in general, uh, these wines do not come from the most prestigious wine regions. So the price level is quite interesting as well. So if you come across an interesting bottle of Vin Pétillant Naturel, don't hesitate to share it in the comments section. Like I'm happy to learn about new wines that I haven't tried yet. And um, this was it for today. Uh, thanks for watching Wine Anecdotes, Wine Stories, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll see you back very soon. Bye.